Hi, today I'm going to be installing the DDWRT firmware onto my Linksys E4200 router. This is a pretty powerful firmware that will enable many more configuration options than I have access to with the standard firmware. This is available for many different types of routers. Um, it's available for a lot of Linksys models and many others. So I'm um, following the instructions at the official DDWRT wiki page, which are available at this link. I'll post that down below. Before I begin the process, I'm gonna download all of the files that I'm gonna need. Um, this may not be completely necessary, but I figure I want to minimize my internet activities once I start the process. Plus, it's probably a good idea to make sure that all the links are valid. So I click this file to download it. Uh, then I'm going to scroll down and... Um, I'm only going to need one of these, but I'll download all four of them right now, just to be sure. Now that I've downloaded all of those, I'll scroll back up here to the start of the flashing process. And I should first mention that I have a wired connection between my computer and the router. You probably want to make sure you have a wired connection as opposed to being on a wireless network. Because the first step is to disconnect all cables and wireless clients. So I'm going to disconnect all unnecessary cables, leaving only three. The Ethernet cable between my computer and the router the Ethernet cable between the modem and the router, and of course the power cable is necessary. Next I'm gonna go into the web interface for my router. I'll go to the wireless tab and disable the wireless interfaces just to make sure that no wireless clients can connect to it. Now that I've done that, I'll close the web interface and the next step is to perform a 30-30-30 reset on the device. Now what that means is you'll have to press and hold down the reset button on the back of the unit. You'll be holding it down for a total of 90 seconds. First you press and hold it for 30 seconds. And then, without releasing the button, you'll unplug the unit, wait another 30 seconds, and while still holding the button, you'll plug it back in and wait a final 30 seconds. The reset button on this particular unit is located just to the left of the Ethernet cable coming from the modem. That is the left when you're standing in front of the unit. Okay, now that I've rebooted the router, the next step is to flash the initial firmware onto it. The version here is 16773, but be aware that there may be a newer version when you do this, so pay attention to that number. So I'm going to wait a few seconds for the router to reboot and then I'll go to the administration tab in the web interface, go to firmware upgrade, choose file, and I'll pick the one here that has the, that build number, 16773. And then I'll click Start Upgrade, and I'll wait a few minutes for this to complete.
When it's done, a password prompt may appear. Just hit cancel and you're gonna perform another 30-30-30 reset on your router. After you reset again, you'll log back into the web interface of your router and you'll see that you now have the mini version of the DDWRT firmware. I suppose you could stay with that mini version if you wanted, but we want to continue the process and get the full version. The next step is to flash the latest version of the firmware onto the router. We'll try the December 2011 version, which doesn't list a build number in the title, but if we mouse over it, we can see that it's 18000. So we'll remember that number and go into our router page. Again, go to the administration tab. The username is now root, R-O-O-T. And the password is admin. So we go to the firmware upgrade tab, choose file, and select the 18000. Click upgrade and now we'll wait a few minutes again. After a few minutes, the upgrade will be complete and the router will have rebooted. So we'll just go back into the web interface. And now we have the full version of the DDWRT firmware. You're done with the process now, so you can go start enjoying all your new options. I'm just going to try one of those options now called SSH because I had noticed in the warnings on the wiki that SSH didn't work for some people in this build. Um, so I went to the security tab here and I'm going to enable SSH, save, and then I'll go to administration, and reboot router. After it's done rebooting, I'll bring up my terminal program and I'll type ssh space dash l for login space root space and then my IP address 192.168.1.1 after a few seconds, you may see a security prompt. Type yes if you do. And then the password is admin. I'll type ls space slash to get the directory listing at the root. And it seems to be working. So that's it. Enjoy.